Hey, what's up everybody? In this video, I want to talk about MainStage, which is an incredible piece of software by Apple that I absolutely love and have a really deep appreciation for. I used to use MainStage all the time for live performing, and even though I pretty much completely replaced it with Ableton Live at this point, I still want to make a video about it because of how useful I found it when I was using it on a daily basis. MainStage is the software that I originally used to conceive of the whole Wii Remote for motion controlled effects thing. I couldn't have come up with any of that stuff without MainStage, and in a lot of ways I think that it's a lot better for that purpose than Ableton. I have a bunch of videos from my early YouTube days that are you know, low quality but very information dense about how that stuff works if you want to check it out specifically. But in this video, I want to talk about more why MainStage is awesome generally and why you might want to consider making it a part of your electronic wind instrument lifestyle. So wait, hold up. You're probably asking yourself, hey, why is this guy making a video about MainStage when he just said he uses Ableton now? Well, good question. My answer for you is simple. MainStage is a lot cheaper than Ableton and it somehow still comes with all of the amazing plugins that come with Logic Pro. So what is MainStage? Well, MainStage is a host for software instruments and audio effects, and it also lets you create your own user interface to interact with those. I'll show you why it's good for electronic wind instruments by setting up a project to use with my recorder. I think the recorder is the perfect example for this because it has so many different modes of expression in that it has breath control and motion control. So let's jump right in and see what we can do. So I will say that one thing that does bug me about MainStage is the fact that it doesn't have a completely empty project for you to start with. Um, but that's fine, we can just open up this keyboard project and then uh, delete everything. So yeah, let's hit the X up here, get out of performance mode, um, I'm gonna click Untitled Concert, hit Delete, get rid of all my patches, because we just want to start fresh. We're not trying to play a keyboard here, we're playing a digital wind instrument. So now let's go over to the channel strips and we'll just delete all of the channel strips. We'll leave the metronome and output 1 and 2 because I don't think it'll let us delete those anyway. And then we'll go to layout, and then we'll hit command A, select everything, delete. Okay, great. A clean slate. So now we're in the layout tab, and this is where we make the on-screen representation of our instrument. We unfortunately don't have any electronic wind instruments to choose from in the screen controls palette, so we'll just go with a keyboard uh, that's close enough, maybe 76 notes. Why not? Click on that to select it. Um, the layers kind of bug me, so I'm just going to uncheck that box. Okay, cool. So now um, we're getting a little bit of action on the keys there whenever I like play notes on this instrument. Also, um, you can see that the mod wheel is reacting to the tilt control of my recorder. By the way, if we click on the mod wheel over here, you can see that it's listening for number one modulation. So this is MIDI CC number one. Check the uh, description of my video for a little explanation of MIDI CC. So now we can see the notes on the keyboard when we play notes on our instrument. We can see a little bit of action out of the mod wheel reacting to the tilt motion control on this instrument. So now we need to represent the other controls provided by our instrument, namely the breath control and the rotation aspect of the motion control. A good way to do this is to use dials. So we'll just go over into this palette and find a couple of dials. I like these round knobs. Uh, we don't need eight of them, we just need two of them. So I'll put one over here and I'll put one over here. But I've decided that this one is going to represent breath and this one is going to represent rotation. Because I want the one on the left over here to represent breath, I have to let it know what signals I want to listen for. So I'm gonna click on this dial I'm gonna say MIDI port, all is fine, but I could also be specific. I could say Bluetooth recorder, this one. And then I could say for number, I want you to listen for 11, which is the MIDI CC that is associated with breath control on this instrument. Other instruments use two. Whichever one your instrument uses doesn't really matter. They're just numbers. Okay, cool, let's see if it worked. Great, so now this dial is moving whenever I blow into my instrument. Perfect. So now we need to do the same thing for the rotation dial. So I'm going to say, hey, MIDI port Bluetooth recorder L, and I want you to listen for number 52. Okay, cool. So now we can see that the dial rotates to the left or to the right, um, depending on which direction I rotate my recorder. So that's pretty neat. And we're going to use that for some cool stuff soon. So yeah, now we've got these dials. Now we gotta tell them what we want them to do. So to do that, I'm gonna go over here in my patch list. I'm gonna hit plus to create a new patch. 
And then I'm gonna go over here to my channel strip and I'm gonna hit plus to create a new software instrument. Cool. So if we click over here in input, we can choose from all of the plugins that you might have installed on your computer. And then over here is all the stuff that comes with main stage. Pretty awesome. There's some really good stuff in here. So I'll just use ES1 as an example. It's relatively simple. So I think I'll just make a really simple beginning of a nice sound for electronic wind instruments. Cool. I want to make this legato and maybe we'll just go all into the wave. We'll bring the octave down a little bit and uh, raise the cutoff. Nice, that sounds more like a saw wave. Oh, so by the way, um, Logic, Main Stage, and GarageBand, all the channel strips are set up to listen for expression automatically. So if your instrument is sending CC number 11, this little dial at the top of each channel strip will react to that and it will change the volume, which is cool. But I want to do something else. I want to use expression to control this filter. Because that sounds pretty cool to me. Let's bring this down another octave. Let's give this a little bit of glide, why not? It's a little too much glide. Let's just make the decay and the sustain super long. Okay, cool. So that's the start of a nice patch. Now, I want to use this dial to control the cutoff. So basically the brightness or darkness of the sound. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on this dial and then we're gonna say, let's just move this panel a little bit, get a bit of a better view. Okay, click on this dial and then we're gonna say instrument one, that's uh, this channel strip over here, INST1 where we loaded the ES1 and then we'll click on the ES1 in this little menu over here and then, okay, what do we wanna control in the ES1? We want to control cutoff, great. So now we can see our save value, our maximum and our minimum. We can just leave those as is. So now that CC11 is controlling the cutoff, um, it's no longer controlling this at the channel strip level. So I'll just put that all the way back up. My gosh, that's super loud. <laughs> Let's just <laughs> turn that down a little bit. cool so that's like a pretty usable patch you know but we're just getting started we still got to use our motion controls to do cool stuff um, so the tilt already is affecting the mod wheel which will just automatically add a little bit of vibrato to this synth which is cool um, so that's taken care of not every synth is going to be programmed to react that way but as I'm about to show you you can use these dials or you know this on-screen control to make any synth do whatever you want it to. And that goes for synths, but that also goes for audio effects. So let's add a couple audio effects. So if I click over here in the audio effects box, um, we got, you know, all of these to choose from. Let's go modulation. Let's, uh, let's get a phaser going. <laughs> So that sounds cool. Let's uh, let's just get really extreme with this. Let's turn this up and this up. So that sounds absolutely crazy. Now we don't want to have that going on all the time. We want that to be an effect that we can activate with uh, motion control. So we can just close that. And now let's click on our motion control dial and let's say, okay, let's go to the instrument one channel strip, go to the phaser effect, and let's control the output mix. So now we've got our save value, range min, and range maximum. With this particular audio effect, the output ranges from plus 100% and minus 100%. And Basically, 
plus 100 and minus 100 are going to stay on the same. So we want our minimum to be 0, not minus 100. So we'll just put that to 0. OK, cool. So now we can control the level of the effect by rotating the instrument. But it's not quite right, because you know, in a neutral playing position, it sounds like that. But then when we rotate it a little bit to the left, it fades out. So that's not quite what we want. Fortunately, we have this little scale parameter graph that we can open up. So our range minimum is over here, and our range maximum is over here. And we can see our current position of rotation represented by this nice little dot here. You can see it moving around as I move my recorder around. So in a neutral playing position, we want this dot to be at zero. So I'm just going to click here and add a point. And then I'm going to click and drag that point to about 64. Just so that we're clear, our recorder is sending a value between zero and 127. And when it's like this, it's sending a value of zero. And when it's like this, it's sending a value of 127. And when it's in the middle, it's sending a value of 64. And we want to be like, OK, so at 64, I want 0% of this effect to be faded in. <laughs> And then we can fade it in by rotating a little bit. And we can make that fade in a little bit more dramatic by adding another point and just making this, you know, ramp a little bit steeper. So we've only used half of this dial, and we can actually use the other half for a different audio effect. So the way that we do that is we just click on this mappings tab, and then we add another mapping by hitting this plus button. So now our output mix mapping for the phaser is over here. And then in this tab, we have unmapped. So we can tell what we want it to do now. But first, I think we need another audio effect. So um, why not add a little pitch shifter so that we can fade in some harmony? So I think maybe it'd be good to fade in a perfect fourth below the note that we're playing. So we can do that by taking the semitones dial and moving it to minus five. <laughs> Okay, cool. So now the question is, what part of this plugin do we need to control to get a useful effect? For me, I think the answer is mix. So we'll go over here to our unmapped tab, and then we'll hit instrument one, because that's the channel strip the effect is in. And we'll find the effect, pitch shifter, great. And then we need the mix. Okay, so save value 25%, range maximum 100, range minimum zero. <laughs> So now we're going to have to do the same thing where we like mess with the graph and mess with the range minimum and maximum because at 100% we're only going to hear that perfect fourth down. We're not going to hear the note that we're actually playing. So what we actually want is 50% and that way we get an equal amount of the note that we're playing and the note that's being generated by this effect. So now in order to get this to work nicely with our motion control we need to mess with the scale parameter graph. What we need to do is we need to make it look kind of like the opposite of the other graph that we made. Reason being is we're doing the opposite motion to trigger the harmonizer effect. So an easy way to do this, and this is something that I love about MainStage, is we can just go copy on this graph. And then over here, we can go to our Mix tab, hit this, and then hit Paste. So now it's exactly the same, which is not what we want. But if we hit Invert, then we have exactly what we want. <laughs> So now we have a really interesting and dynamic sound where we can control vibrato and harmony and a phaser effect. As you can imagine, you can scale this up to come up with some pretty ridiculously complex sounds that you can control in very complex ways. Let me show you another example. This is something that came up in the comments section of one of my recent videos, so I want to be sure to cover this real quick. So in my video about my new preset packs for some free iOS synthesizers, one of my viewers mentioned they were having some trouble with the desktop version. Specifically, they were having trouble mapping breadth to cutoff, which is what we did with the other synthesizer in this video. 
So let me just go over real quick how to do that. Let's hit the plus button up here to start a new patch. And then we'll hit the plus button over here in channel strips to get a new channel strip. We have a software instrument, of course, and we want the input to be monolith, which I made a nice preset pack for that you can get on my Ko-Fi shop. So let's just uh, select one of my patches. How about all systems go? So this is what it's going to sound like without the cutoff filter mapped. Not great. So uh, let's just take our breath dial and then we'll say, okay, instrument two. That's this channel strip because we are in our instrument two patch. We want to control monolith. And what do we want to control? The filter cutoff. Okay, great. So that should be fine now. So now with the power of main stage, you can use my monolith preset pack on desktop. So that's pretty much it for this video. Hopefully you now know everything you need to know to get the most out of your electronic wind instrument and all of its features, whether it's just the breath controller or any built-in motion controls or any other cool controls that are built into your instrument. This is a bit of a hot take, but honestly, it's my opinion that if you're not using some software like Mainstage or Ableton to leverage your instrument's controls, well, then you're not getting your money's worth out of your instrument. So uh, hope this helps you and uh, yeah, have a great time. Have fun with Mainstage and uh, see you next time.